Conde, thank you for taking the time to do this interview with us. Rural youth is the future of the agricultural sector. However, we know that more and more the youth are migrating to urban areas. What do you think are the key gaps that need to be addressed to reduce this migration and provide better opportunities for young people in rural areas? First of all, I, I wouldn't take uh, migration as a bad thing. The only thing that matters is what are the push factors, what are the key factors that push young people from rural area, or what are the pull factors that pulls young people to towns or to urban areas. There are so many types of migrations, like there are forced fight migration, there are economic migration, there are seasonal migrations. There are so many uh, factors to the migration processes, like I am migrant, you are migrant. We are, uh, I'm not working in a, in a country where I'm, I'm born. So, but uh, what pushed me here? What are the pull factors? The same analogy works for these rural young people who are in the rural area. They, do, they see no opportunities for, uh, in agriculture because they see their parents are digging, their grandparents have been digging, you know, all the way through the land size is shrinking down. So the push factor is getting interest in agriculture. That's one of the, one of the areas. So like, let me, so uh, in order, well, so uh, my, my discussion would be not to avoid migration, but how can we make agriculture uh, a business type or a kind of um, interesting venture or opportunity for young people to be employed? Let me give you two major facts. One fact is in Africa, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa countries, agrarian community is aging. The average age of our agriculture community is 50 to 60 years. So those who, are, who have been in farming are aging, number one. The other, fact is, the other fact is young people in rural areas are constitute more than 50% of the population. So, you know, there is a perfect fit between the, the needs for young people to get into agriculture opportunities. So the question is, how can we make agriculture a case for these young people? Like, is it an opportunity for young people to contribute to uh, agriculture through value addition? Are we thinking beyond agriculture, just production? Uh, can we uh, can we make can we think of like what are the opportunities for young people to get into agriculture so like do they have access to land do they have access to financial services do they have access to the jobs by itself like so that they do uh, sustainable livelihoods uh, do, do they have adequate training education skills agricultural skills inputs resources do they have access to markets? You know, all these are the key challenges which actually inhibit young people from uh, being involved in agriculture. About these factors that are missing, you were talking about lack of access to land, lack of access to finance, to jobs. How then can we address these factors? What is Mastercard Foundation doing about this? Can you give us some examples? I will start by saying that our theory of change in economic opportunity for use theory of change really clearly underlines the fact that if young people get the opportunity for adequate demand-driven education, skill development, not only skill in agricultural operation, but also life skills, foundation skills, financial literacy in a very holistic way, then they can be successful in either getting into agriculture market, in being a farmers, or in what the value chain as being entrepreneurs. Let me give you two examples. One is just uh, a one-year example of like uh, which we are working with, like now SNV. Uh, SNV is a Dutch organization which we are working with them in uh, Tanzania. Uh, Mozambique and Rwanda, in Tanzania in agriculture, agribusiness and biogas, renewable energy, in uh, Mozambique, 
sold the agribusiness and in uh, Rwanda, uh, renewable energy. We are aspiring to bring in 21,000 young people in five years in agriculture and renewable energy sector as entrepreneurs and also as opportunity for their future. Uh, it's early stage, but like practical skill development process is going on. Another good example which I can give you is, which we are now far ahead in TechnoServe. We have programs with TechnoServe in uh, Kenya, Rwanda, and Uganda. And we, have, we are about to get into the second phase, but in the first case, the main form of economic engagement with young people was about on horticulture, on small remnants, on short-term enterprises, and on some main commodities like maize, beans, and bananas. The main lesson we have learned is tailoring the type of credit for them, the importance of their aftercare, especially after intervention, the short-term engagement in land renting, in cooperative way of working, in continuously reviewing curriculum. So like if I just simply tell you about the average monthly income for this uh, program, uh, participants in uh, Kenya, Rwanda, and Uganda, before the program, they were getting $21. And after the program, they, were get, they are getting $88. Before the program in Rwanda, they were getting $25. After the program, they are getting around $60. The same thing in Uganda, almost more than double. If we make our case for agriculture as a business, this is what we, we can do. And uh, we don't think like just like skill development by itself is a panacea. We don't also feel that because young people are trained, it doesn't mean that that is the end of it. They should get the job. They should get employed in one way or another. Then after being employed, they have to stay in their work for some time so that they get additional income, build their families, so transition to their next level of family, familyhood. Okay. Despite the growing perceived importance of youth to address the need to produce more food, there is still little mention of this group in international agreements calling for action to reduce poverty and to produce more food and promote nutrition security. Do you share this point of view? And if so, what suggestions would you have to highlight rural youth in agreements such as the post-2015 development agenda? Food and nutrition security is a very uh, comprehensive term. It, does, it means a lot. Uh, it means availability of food, which is production. It means accessibility of food, which means uh, ability to buy, to purchase, and get food if they don't produce it. And the third one is uh, utilization of food, which is nutrition aspect. And the fourth one is stabilization of food. Uh, are they getting all year round? Are they getting two times, three times a day? Are they getting all the months round? So the, the very concept of food and nutrition security is more of uh, uh, the whole idea from the production until conception and until stability. When I see the post-2015 agenda, a kind of tripartite process, which like post-MDG process, the uh, sustainable development goals process, and also the post-education for all processes. In all these processes, yes, food security and agricultural development are mentioned in various ways. Young people in rural areas, these are mentioned, but they are not mentioned in a very consolidated way. They are just mentioned and uh, I'm hoping that uh, more detailed uh, interventions will be implemented, will be, will be included uh, beyond the mentioning. We don't see anything about participation of youth in the agenda. There are some mentions in different uh, ch uh, ch uh, chapters like uh, like report on high level panel of eminent persons has mentioned some some areas, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa mentioned some points, uh, African Union Common African Position have mentioned some of points, but uh, to meet universal goal of ensuring food security and good nutrition, which is goal five, and also while creating jobs, sustainable livelihoods, and equitable growth, this is 
all mentioned, but the needs for calling out youth employment and agriculture as a potential avenue is specifically lacking. The needs for calling out youth employment in agriculture is not specifically called out. Conde, according to the Mastercard Foundation's experience with rural youth, what do you think the donor community should be doing more of or less of to provide better opportunities for young people in rural areas? Uh, development partners in the field should be very much uh, thinking of the disaggregation of young people and not thinking young people as homogeneous group. We need to involve young people as collaborators in both the project design, implementation, and evaluation. Currently, like many development partners and donors, are engaging young people, uh, but uh, are we engaging them really in all aspects of the program design? Are we really uh, asking them what they need? And are we consulting them in areas, in issues where, which matters most to them? Are we engaging them in policy dialogue? This is something which we have to do. Uh, the more involved these young people are in the various process, they feel ownership, they feel honored, and they will be uh, contributing a lot. And also they will be working hard in their agriculture operation because now we are trying to make a case agriculture as a business for them. The second point is uh, the engagement of private sector. Uh, as development practitioners uh, as, and also as donors, we have to think of uh, working through this, uh, working also with private sector so that our interventions are demand driven. Whether we like it or not, private sector are the largest employers of young people, be it in agriculture and be it outside agriculture, be it in urban areas, peri urban areas, even currently in the rural areas. The third and the last point I made, just like I made, need to mention, is uh, engage technology where appropriate and the need for technology as an avenue, as a, as a point where young people can understand, can work in agriculture, like market information, linking them with market, linking them with financial service providers, enabling these young people into becoming more active in agriculture, post-harvest production, processing, handling, marketing, all these aspects.